Today we're going to take a look at the Indoor Survival Canteen. Uh, this is a very effective water filtration system where not only do you have the water filter built in, but you have a container as well, and you have this little pouch you can carry it in. But what's really cool about this particular Indoor is that it has a survival kit built in. So we're going to check it out and go through all the different pieces and the items and see how they work. Now I love the concept of having your water filter, your container, and all of your survival items inside of the container. It makes a really small package. Uh, one thing though that I want to show you, and I did this review a number of years ago, is on the original indoor survival canteen. And this is in green. Uh, this is a great system that I've used for a long time. Uh, and this is, <laughs> it's pretty roughed up because I have been carrying it. One thing that I like about this, and I'll show you in a minute, but this fits down into a standard uh, USGI issued canteen cover. And uh, you can even put the cup underneath it. And this goes on my survival bag, my bug out bag. Uh, it's just a great way to be able to filter water. Uh, but here they've gone a step further and they've gone with a kind of a translucent color for the canteen. You have your cover with a strap and this strap also kind of hooks to the other side. Uh, and then you have a belt loop right here and there are different ways you can use to attach this, even with these D-rings if you're going to take this off. Uh, but it doesn't have the molly, so you might be a little bit limited to that, but it'll attach regardless. Uh, now, these are Velcro. It's a pretty decent uh, little cover. Now, it does come in a blaze orange cover as well. It's according to what you're wanting. If you want something a little more subdued, of course, this works. Uh, and it is just a little bit padded, so it's a nice little cover with a grommet in the bottom. But inside here, we have a, a lot of different things for survival. And so first, I'm just going to go ahead and take this off, and I'm going to show you the filter itself. Uh, and as you can see, now this one hasn't been primed or anything. Uh, you take this little yellow tab off before you prime it. And we're going to go through that as well. But one thing about this filter system is that it is one of the most tested in the lab and in the field of any other filter of its kind. Now that doesn't mean there are not more advanced water filtration systems. Uh, but this goes by all the EPA protocols. It goes by the NSF and ANSI standards, uh, which ANSI is known for testing out different gear. And the Broward Testing Laboratory, which is world renowned for testing water filtration. Uh, it removes 99.9% .9 of all the microorganisms such as uh, Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Uh, and it also removes 99.9999 to infinity, all chemicals and heavy metals. And it also removes viruses, bacteria, including E. coli. So this is a really great water system. There are some filters out there that are just basic. There are some that are just for just filtering your regular tap water. This is for a survival situation and these filters are replaceable which makes it really great because you can change these out uh, it does filter a hundred gallons of water uh, according to the quality of the water you know if you have sediment and things like that but the best thing to do is to treat that water in the first place at least filter it out uh, or pre-filter it before you use it now here we have all the items pulled out i will tell you that pulling out the smaller items first makes it easier when you get down this should be the last this space blanket because it's rolled up and it barely fits right through here so uh, it's not really that difficult to pull everything out now first you want to prime the canteen and prime the filter so we're going to go ahead and take off the lid right here this little orange sticker make sure you remove that then we're just going to fill the canteen with water get it almost full Place the lid, put it on tight, open the valve. Now you want to push this water out at a 45 degree angle. And just do this. This gets all the contaminants and particles out of the filter system uh, while it's from the factory. We're going to do this two times. And then once it's done, it's ready for use. And your filter's primed.
good and clean, good taste. Just give it a little squeeze. You know, even though this creek looks really clean, there's a lot of hidden bacteria that can be here or different viruses. So uh, definitely a safe way to go. But not only if you're out on the go, if you're in another country where water quality is not that great, <laughs> this is also something important to have. Now to get started, uh, we will talk about the space blanket, which is really important in a survival situation. You have three hours in harsh conditions. That's how long you can live. And being able to wrap with this, keep, it'll keep your body temperature uh, warm, it'll keep your core warm. Uh, but this also is important if you're injured. Uh, this helps to prevent shock. In fact, a lot of paramedics carry space blankets to be able to wrap their uh, uh, patients and to be able to make sure that they stay warm. Well, I guess this works. If you want the green a little subdued, it is reflective. If you want to signal someone, there you go. This can also make a shelter. Now I gotta pack this thing up so I can get it back to the house. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't too bad. Um, I mean, it's not quite as compact as it was, but I really wasn't trying to be. But um, this is a little more heavier than your standard space blanket. So I think this is something good that can be reused. And then next we have a, an, an indoor, and this is one of their fair sim rods or fire steels, and you do have a really good striker as well. Uh, I've used these quite a bit, and uh, they're just excellent. Of course, fire steel is fire steel, but it's not super thin, but yet it's not super thick either. But this will give you thousands of strikes. Now when it comes to your fire steels, one of the things about it is making sure that you get that coating off. When you do, you'll know it. <laughs> that puts a nice spark out. Next we have the utility flame and this is a flammable gel. Uh, you just tear it open and this lights really easy and this is a great way to get fire started quickly. Now let's take the utility flame. We're going to check it out. This is obviously a one-time use if, unless you can seal up this bag again. We're just going to squirt it out right here on this wet sand, and I'm sitting on a sandbar. We're going to take our fire steel, <laughs> well looks like this utility flame is not so flammable. Uh, we tried it with the fire steel and I figured, well, it's not working, so I wanted to try it with a lighter. And, uh, whoa, that's hot. Oh, that's real hot. Okay, it's invisible, it must be alcohol. Uh, even this stick's on fire. Well, that's pretty cool. That fire may have been started down there at the creek. But uh, I was in the middle of a sandbar and it had water on either side, so I'm not really worried about it. But uh, that's definitely, definitely flame. There we go. It's just invisible. Okay, I was getting ready to complain about it. So uh, that's pretty cool. That's a really hot, hot, hot fire. We also have a signal mirror. And uh, this is great. Not only does it have the hole to be able to use it as a signal mirror, but also in case you have, uh, you're have you injured and you have damage to your face or, or hands or somewhere where you can't really see it, you can look through the mirror. So a lot of good reasons to have a mirror. Of course you have the reflective side on the front, then in the back. You just put your eye up to this and aim 
for whatever movement you're trying to signal to, whether it's a helicopter and a vehicle, people, just aim it and face the sun and you should be good to go. One thing I do love about this mirror too is that if you have any uh, injuries or anything, especially around your face that you can't see, you can look in this mirror and use it. Next we have an emergency whistle and uh, has a little clip, also a lanyard loop to be able to tie that down and um, you know, being able to, for people to find you, you can start blowing this whistle. Pretty loud, pretty distinct as well. Just surprised the dogs didn't go freaking ape when I blew this thing. <laughs> and then we have a liquid field compass, um, and it's it's definitely reading right because I checked it. But um, then we also have a thermometer right here, which is really comes in handy, especially in really cold weather or really hot weather, and to be able to just kind of check the temperature. It also has a lanyard hole here as well. And then here on the back, there's some references to wind chill tables and your skin temperature, which this could really come in handy, especially telling you you need to get into this space blanket. <laughs> it's a liquid field compass and it's facing true north. This is my property, I know where north is and it is dead on the money. But what I really like is this little thermometer, especially in a survival situation, you can tell what the temperature is and know to get to shelter. Pretty heavy duty spork uh, with an edge right here that's somewhat serrated so you're going to be able to cut but it's a very ample, fairly large spooned spork. And for my spork with a knife on it, so I guess this would be a spiv, a spifork. Sp <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it works. If you want a detailed demonstration of a spork with a serrated side, you're too bored and then we have a flexible wire saw and this has your loops here to be able to use it and then you have a separate loop as well uh, but these will cut and uh, they're just great to have very compact and easy if you don't have room for a large saw now the small hand saw is all wrapped up uh, and we'll just undo it once you get it through that first little hook it's no big deal but just remember it makes it really easy to re uh, assemble back to its original form uh, if you'll notice how it's done. Now you can use your fingers in these rings but it's difficult so just take a couple of sticks place it in like so bring it around crap. Well, I broke this stick before I finished because it was old and dead, but you can see it cuts great. And this is a pretty large piece. I mean, this is about a two inch diameter, but I cut over halfway through it before I just stepped on it and snapped it. So uh, very effective. But the sticks are a must. And we've got it back portable without too much effort. Here we have instructions uh, and a lot of different tips and ways to do things, survival instructions, and this is really good. It tells you how to build shelters and make fire and different medical, all kind of different things, and this is waterproof. So you can keep this with the pack, and uh, this could really come in handy. So all in all, it'll give you a good start on survival. There's a lot of great items here, uh, and then everything fits right into the container. One thing too, I can use this strap whether over a shoulder or this way so it'll stay secure. You know, I've got my water where I can have hands free. My one complaint was when we use the canteen for water, we wouldn't have a place to put all these extra survival items. But, you can see they're pretty small. They just fit in my pocket. They could actually fit in my jean pocket or definitely in some cargo pants. Ready to go. On the LA Police Gear website, I did see this for about $62.95. Uh, and then if you want just the canteen, uh, I think on the indoor website, they're about $46. Bucks. I saw them on Amazon for around the $35 mark or something, a little bit under $35. Uh, 
uh, but for the whole system that you're getting here I think that's a great price for this kind of filter system while this is definitely not a complete survival system this will definitely get you started <laughs> and you know and supplement what you have because I think this will take care of most emergency situations that are just standard uh, but now if you're in more of a grid down situation of course you'll want to add to it but this is a great start guys again in the rule of threes you can only live three days without water and so it's very important to have a proper way to treat water one of the things that I was doing when I was walking down this creek was noticing all the different animal tracks and don't think that they don't use this as their bathroom what in of course possibly worse because humans live up the creek <laughs> but you know having the right tools and then of course with the survival kit you have a complete uh, setup to be able to survive and your chances increase greatly uh, one thing about this in particular is all the items that were in the kit are now in my vest and so it's really easy and portable as well. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. I think we need to replace all of our spoons and knives and forks for these. You already know what I'm going to say. Video's over. You can go home now. Or you can go to the next video. Preferably a sensible prepper video. Or Such, my evil twin. What are you looking at, kitty? No, you can't have any. <laughs>